there any more questions? <coughs> Can we close the public hearing? A motion, please. Make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Yes, second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. <coughs> okay. Now we've got the room warmed up. Let's go to <laughs> uh, the minutes from the previous meeting. If you could. Oh. July 5th, 2016, the regular monthly meeting of the Franklin Town Board was called to order at 7.35 p.m. by Supervisor Jeff Taggart. Present were Garrett Six, Donnie Smith, Mark Lane, Paul Warner, and Jeff Taggart. Ken Walter gave the minutes and report for the Kellogg Franklin Trust. They have changed the guidelines for qualifying to run for a seat on the trust. Brian, Brian, Brian. That one went back. I think that one went. Looks like you're having an awful time. Let's. We don't want to break. Anybody got a hammer? That one opened. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they have changed the guidelines for qualifying to run for a seat on the trust. Ken will send an updated copy to the town clerk's office. Mark Lang reported that the grader will be going back and they will be getting the excavator again. The chips monies are still moving forward. He anticipates the town should be getting approximately $57,000. Nothing new to report from the rec committee. Jeff called Cheryl Sacco and he had her talk to Jim Basil about opting out of the pilot program. They decided it is the best interest of the town to pass a law to opt out of the program. A public a resolution for a public hearing at 7 p.m. on August 2nd, 2016 was made by Donnie Smith. Here at six, seconded the motion and all present agreed. The regular board meeting will immediately follow the public hearing. Jeff brought up the Methodist Society Cemetery. It needs to be mowed because there is no longer anyone able to care for it. Dawn will make some phone calls to try to find someone that would be able to mow it at this time. Burt Barnes is resigning from the Assessment Review Board. Pete Nero said that he might be interested in the position. The renaming of State Highway 357 in honor of Nicholas Huzinski has passed the State House and Senate. We're waiting for the governor to sign it into law. The Treadwell Water Meeting was held last week. They will have to get a 45,000 gallon holding tank. One of the wells in Treadwell has sulfur water and it takes more to get that water ready to drink to clean it up. They will probably have to get another well drilled in the future. There are lead pipes under County Highway 14 that need to be replaced. They will investigate getting grant money to offset the cost. Tony Brewer said that the town is doing a great job on the roads. The town received a check for $56,175 from Constitution Pipeline. The money will be put into an account to be used for pipeline-related expenses. Brian Brock is wondering if the town should revisit the current code of ethics. With no other business to come before the board, Garrett Sitz made a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.20. Donnie Smith seconded the motion, and all present agreed. Any additions or corrections? I wasn't here on that one. Well, Donnie, you were. Do you have any corrections to it? No. Okay, I think I accept the motion. Make a motion to accept. A second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. We'll go on to some new business. Um, Garrett, he's not here. He's celebrating his twins' birthday. Yep. So. Uh, Okay, they're going to have a, a yard sale for old Franklin days, the rec committee is. Pool's doing well, no issues. Baseball went over well, party is August 4th at 6 o'clock at the pool. And that's it, that's what's the update from the committee. So it's good to hear that pool doing well. That seemed to be the topic for the last month or maybe two. Or community-wise, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've heard rumors. I'm sure everybody else has. But, um, so that's that's a report from um, the rec committee. Um, there is no, there was no planning board meeting last month. 
there was a public hearing set and the, the individual backed out because they might be pur uh, purchasing a present business instead of moving, having a special use permit at his dad's. He might be buying another grounds. Okay, so he backed out and so we, we got, had, it was two board members. Uh, chairman, secretary, county planner, myself, we had a session of talking. <laughs> and there was nothing on the agenda this month, so there's no meeting on Thursday night unless somebody's got an issue to bring up to them. I mean, I can call them and we would meet if there was concern from somebody here. I don't know if anybody would want to have a meet or not. That's, uh, that's, but that's what's happening on the planning board. Very quiet. Okay. Um, I did get a last month on old business on the cemetery up on 28. Um, we had a couple people interested. Um, I got a hold of uh, Mark Doring, which he had done some cemetery mowing up to uh, Dick Blackman's on a small cemetery up there, and he agreed to do it, and I guess he got it done. Looks quite well, you know, looks good. And we do have a letter here from the family uh, to the town clerk, town council, and town workers of Franklin. It was a great, it was a great joy that I learned this week that the town of Franklin mowed and trimmed, the town of Franklin had the cemetery mowed and trimmed, it wasn't, the town didn't do it. Uh, the Alleyout Cemetery last weekend. This this little cemetery has long been considered by our family as as the Knapps Cemetery, family cemetery, and it's signed by John Anderson from Hampton, New Hampshire. From Hampton, New Hampshire. So that was a very nice letter from him. <coughs> um, I think it's it's going to be more and more of an issue to take care of these cemeteries. Um, so I, I, I'm going to, there is a crew, the social, social services has a crew now that does some cemetery work, trimming the cemeteries and stuff. And I'm going to put the town of Franklin on the list of towns that, you know, would, would like some help with it because it is going to be a bigger and bigger problem and a bigger and bigger expense. And this was, um, it cost three hundred dollars to have it mowed. Of course, it was the first time, so it was more work than they figured on. And, uh, so that's what uh, I guess some people said. Boy, that's pretty reasonable. Seemed like a lot of money to me, but I wasn't there mowing, so it probably was reasonable. But you know, <clears throat> it, it got done, and it will, will be done again around Labor Day at a much less price, of course, because it has been. Uh, uh, but I think it's it's an issue that's going to be coming up and become more and more prevalent. I think in the past we've had what six hundred dollars in the budget, Paul, or something like that for mowing cemeteries. Oh yeah, yes. And uh, you know, one mowing took half of it. So we're going to either have to find some more money for it, or we're going to have to hopefully get some help. I don't know if you're aware of the Rotary Club. For years, has taken care of the one that's up on Stalsters. Oh, okay. That's one I, I wasn't sure who took yeah, care of it. No, I know the Club. Boy we Scouts. We go at least three times a year. Okay. The Boy Scouts originally had did a little work on it. I think. Go back far enough. I think. Go back far enough. They they started working out. But so we're at the process now of trying to identify more of the great locations mm -hmm. in there because a lot of the markers. Right. Well, if the we animals get, got in there a few times. Right. I mean, if we can get some help from the county, yeah. from the social services, you know, where they have. People that are working or uh, like work crews, and that's what they've got right now. And I think if you know if more towns find out about it, you know, if, or if we're letting if the county is paying for some of their mow handed cemeteries, come on, they ought to come into Franklin. I, I'm, you know, just a shared a shared services is what it is, and that's something that we should look at. And even for yourselves, I mean, thank you very much for taking care of that, Danny, or for the Rotary to, Rotary to do that. In three years. You know, which is great. I, I wasn't sure who was doing it, or 
you know, but I, I know at one point the Boy Scouts had tried doing something with it. And we just wish Shane would let us put in a gate that was getting harder and harder to crawl under the fence. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that. Yeah, well, yeah, you've got to work on Shane, there's no doubt about it. That's right, that's right. Okay, that that takes care of that. And, oh, not Ken. Ken. Uh, I guess so. Okay, Ken, sorry I put you off a little bit. It's all right. You weren't right. were getting too antsy. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be short tonight anyway, uh, because Morgan Stanley isn't available this early in the month. But I will tell you, uh, checking account at NBDC is $25,286. I will tell you, Morgan Stanley, on opening Monday, we were at $943,000. Okay. That's not the statement. I'm not there. At our last meeting, uh, we did uh, receive the Board of Directors insurance for $804, and that bill has been paid. Uh, we have voted up to $1,000 to replace all of the benches at the Commons. And what we're going to do is wait till we get into the fall and we can get the best possible deal. And this time around, what we're going to do is buy the ones that have the Trex board so that they can stay out in the weather a, oh, lot, a lot longer than the $86 right. of benches that we, right. that we have. Yep. Uh, Jeff. In response to your request that we reconsider the geographic, geographic area for board eligibility, a lot of reasons why we felt we couldn't, but the most important one was our concern that we won't be able to probably satisfy all the legal advertising requirements relative to getting it into newspapers and so on. But Considering your suggestion, what we have done is we have voided all of the revisions made on the 29th and hoping to address probably what Judge Kellogg would like and what you would like. We, our newest change is that we're going to stay with the wording of any attendee or alumni of the Kellogg School and open it up to all of the townships that were adjacent to the original A.L. Kellogg School District, which is Franklin, Delhi, and Meredith. So that's, that's kind of our compromise. Okay. Um, sometime either during August or September, we'll be doing our annual audit, and again, Sonia will be doing it for us. And our August meeting is going to change a little bit. It's going to come back one week. And so our August meeting will be on the 24th of August. That's the clerk in the Triple Fire. Mm -hmm. And I would be glad to entertain any questions or concerns. Any questions or concerns for Ken? No, I was at the meeting. And it was a good meeting and good discussion. And um, we thought that that was a good compromise on that, yeah, well, okay. as far as opening it up. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ken. I see your checking account balance is down because of the maintenance of the lawns and stuff like that. It, it's, it's the maintenance of the lawns. It was the insurance payment check that I brought last time around. Yep. Uh, yeah. And your insurance. And that $804 on top of the check right. that we brought right. you. So, right. at, you know, um, as, as Dwight will say at our last meeting, we still said to be at Again, the meeting was in July. At the end of July, to have a checking account balance that we knew was going to be above $25,000, and it is, we feel real comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So. Okay. And again, that will go up sometime in the right. next couple of days. Oh, no, right. right. When you get the other one. daily interest, you know. Right. There's all that 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 could be 2000 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Usually somewhere right. around two grand. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So any other questions? That will be. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you, Jeff. Good night, everybody. You can be relieved now. Oh, okay. you're doing it. <laughs> okay, we're going home where it's cooler. That's right, that's right. Okay, I guess we'll go to Mark then, I guess. Yeah, I don't have a lot tonight. Just go. September 5th, we're going to start paving. Um, you see some broke case hill, Stockton. And then sometime between now and then, I'll see you. We're going to be doing chip sealing some different roads. Um, Jackson, Gay, Tucker, and Kerry are the ones on the top of the list right now. Mm -hmm. Case Hill, much more Case Hill than you got to do. Down just, the bottom, uh, just street. Just, oh, just from the street. bridge back. From the bridge back to yeah. County Road. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then Stasha. That's, that's, that's just <laughs> going to be uh, 
no out two inches, put two inches back here, and then uh, Stockman's going to take a little more work. We got a lot of drainage work to do there. Street style drainage system for that. And so. oh, that street is where? One right off Key Cell. Or Wickham's. Oh, Wickham's, okay. Goes up into the sun. Yep. Other than that, I'm not going to watch right now. Okay. You've got the excavator. Excavator's here, finally. Uh, a little bit of a hold up, but um, been putting our pipes in and getting that stuff done. Mm -hmm. That's off. Uh, September 9-9. Oh. Uh, nine, nine. September 9 oh. okay. So. okay. And you got the hydraulics put on the... Yeah, he's got the frame on. Uh, yes. And uh, we extended the frame on uh, the really? one that the body's going on. Put the kind of toy guy on and that stuff. And mm -hmm. Hopefully, you know, I have a sandblaster in two weeks. Now, have you looked into a plow for the new, new truck, the new Dodge? Yeah, that, um, there was, through burgers, they had a guy that ordered about six, ten burgers, and they want a fire sale on so, oh. so we think we're going to get a pretty good price on them. Mm -hmm. so, a lot better than any place else. Oh. Okay. Because that, that truck will be done then, right? Yes. Because you got all the hydraulics for the sander and stuff. Or not. Yep. All of that stuff's in it. Um, controls, radios, mm -hmm. um, yep. just the white bars and on. Right. Other than that, everything's ready to go. Okay. Good. Any, any other questions for Mark? Mark, can I ask you a question just for curiosity? I was doing a farm uh, fence over in Westford. And I have never seen it done before. It was amazing to see asphalt melted in place and replayed. There were three tractor trailers with heaters underneath them, and it's not a job I would have wanted. They <laughs> melted that asphalt, somehow put it back down, and were rolling it behind it's, it. It's just milled, it's ground up. Ground up yeah, it's what they call a train, and then the asphalt clamped back to it and stuff. It's, uh, it's a good thing, but it's a pricey. It's expensive. Yeah, it's a pricey. Never seen. They did something like that out in a short stretch of Route 21. Route 28, and they did it. North yeah. Franklin, they did it. And I, I watched them doing it. They had one machine that ground up the uh, pavement and then relayed it and used that as the uh, foundation for a new top cover. Yeah. But they had big, expensive looking machines to do it. <laughs> Well, this actually melted. I mean, I don't know how it was around. It was literally three trucks. The first one melted, the second one got hotter than the third one. I mean, it was a blast for us. I just wow. can't imagine how much propane... That's something you'd use in the wintertime. <laughs> Get some use of this. Heat. <laughs> Anything else, Mark? No, it's a... Okay. Uh, is there anything else from the board? I have a question or yes. a comment. Yes, um, I would propose that maybe we or that the we pass a resolution to look into how um, Frontier Communication responds to uh, uh, problems that people are having with their telephone lines. I, I received some uh, discussion from a, a citizen that uh, Frontier was putting an elderly couple, putting them off on repair. And as everybody knows, we don't have a lot of options in Franklin to start with, with regard to communication. They're kind of, that's it. Right. Um, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Because what they say today, no splicer no in Franklin's area. And just to be, yeah, I guess, self-centered part of me said, I went through the same thing just recently. At, phone uh, service went out, I called, and uh, uh, I called on a Sunday morning, it was actually out on a Saturday, and they told me that uh, the earliest they could get to it, just to look at it, would be Thursday. And I said, You're kidding. I said, no, nope, that's, that's the way it is. They were very cut and dry about it. And again, and I followed up to that, I got a call from an elderly uh, couple, and they were going through the same thing. So I think 
maybe the board ought to register some kind of uh, you know query to the phone company and say you know what's your policy right. that's really we, we need yeah. service in the yeah we need because service because the cell service yeah. we have none whatsoever right um, in many parts of the the town so well, they, they told us or told Jamie today basically unless it's an emergency like if we cut a line or something on on a buried line that we have already had marked out it's going to be take time to get there yeah. which is it's not right you know we all we all know that right yeah i think frontier has financial problems and not doing well well, well there, there's a couple ways to look at that when you just went out and bought in connecticut you went out and bought at and all of their underground line i yeah. would say they, they got a pretty good cash flow going so right, they had money on But they're in the same situation like NYSEG has been. And I'm not defending them by any stretch of the imagination. But you got to remember, like NYSEG in Oneana used to have 44, 48 linemen. Last year they were down to six. Hamden had 38, and they were down to six. Frontier's doing the same thing. You know, they just cutting all their help and thinking that the problem's going to go away. Like, we'll, we'll find places where the trees are laying on their lines. We know they're going to take them out. We call them, ask them to remove them, you know, get it fixed. And their basic response is, when it falls down, we'll clean yeah. it up. Or, it falls down, they'll fix it, and we'll clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, they'll wait till it breaks. Yeah. It, it, before they, instead of maintaining. But, like White says, they're not even coming around and doing that, so. Should it be a concern for, I mean, it, it sounds like it's something that. Public it's a fair service. question. Yes, yeah, public service is yeah. one you Is it phone that's out, or is it internet? Or? It's, it could be either, theoretically. Um, it's but a it's dangerous mine. situation. If, if your phone's out and you don't have cell service, so, that exactly. can be a health issue. We, we, right. Now we have, two, I mean, I've got a business line and a stuff, so I, we were fortunate, and we're younger than the people that I um, heard of other people that went through this or not. And I asked the lady, I said, well, what about if, if we had a medical situation? Well, you'll have to get a doctor's note. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I could have heard of that. But they are, I mean, apparently they're putting up more um, fiber optic lines. But they came up my road, you know, probably two weeks ago. And I wonder what they were doing, so I just casually asked them when I got home, because the truck's right in front of my house. And they were stringing new fiber optics. I see up East Hanson Brook. It looked like they had markings and stuff. Yeah. So hopefully, is that going to be just, is that data and phone? I thought fiber optics was There's both, but I don't know. High speed internet. It's just yeah, high speed yeah. internet? Okay. It's just, that's what I was told. That doesn't help the phone, all right. But, and, it, and if they're going to service it that way, I mean, certainly, you know, and I asked them, I said, are you going to give me a break on, on you know, the four or five days that I didn't have phone service? And go, oh, I, I can't discuss that with you. <laughs> You know, you have to call some other number, and you know, after a while, it gets, you know, the financial department. Yeah. You know. So anyway, I think it. Well, I think you know, if you'd like to put something together, I'd be happy to. I think it'd be something to consider yeah. to even send it to public service. That, you know, we need. So we gotta go. Yeah. You know, I call we public need service. To, right, but maybe as a town, that would that, that might carry yeah. you know more yeah, concern. Would. I don't know. I mean, how how are they moving ahead with Verizon? So as usual. As far as I know, I haven't heard a thing. Have you, Paul? No, no. We haven't received a check. How's that? <laughs> Not an increased check. So, no, I haven't heard Well, we did get an increase. But oh, you just did? off of this off one. Off of this one. Not yeah. another tower. Right, not another. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, if you'd like to you know, work on a resolution or something, yep. Dwight, yep. we'd be yeah. definitely in, you know, look, look favorable on it. Yeah, to the public service because it is a concern. I mean, that's you know, legit. What right? happens if there's a fire? Or... Right. Right. There's and we don't have the cell service that yeah. a lot of places do have. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you're one way. <laughs> if it's not working, it won't get working for a week. It's kind of makes it tough. And the other thing, especially in the I mean, the town of Franklin, I don't know if there are other townships within Delaware County or neighboring counties, but. Um, we can call one exchange, and that's 829. Mm -hmm. 
And yes. I brought that up, and I was told, "Well, you can always get this and this." And you know, that's not the that's not a time to have that discussion. It's almost, uh, in my mind, it's just it's almost a strong arm tactic. That's my personal opinion. But um, yeah, that's you know, fine. when you have no service and you can only call Franklin. And, but by the way, we can sell you something more expensive. <laughs> You're right on that. Most of them just for the number of the joint accounts to try to call you there. Exactly. And they just sit down. Right. And it's like, what do we do? We can't fight the phone okay. company. Okay. Well, um, does anybody open it up to questions? From the constituents. Are there any questions? Any? Okay, well then I guess I'll make a motion to adjourn. No, oh, 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 I'll, I'll just deny that. I got a, I got a letter from Hancock. Tom Hancock. They would like to have the town pass a resolution supporting DEC moving for an earlier bear season because of. Uh, crop damage and the number of bear that are out there. Here's a letter. I'm sorry, almost forgot. Uh, but it's a concern over, you know, realistically, bear season is deer season. If I'm not mistaken, am I right on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by that time, they've already done all the damage you're ever going to do. <laughs> except, <coughs> well, except over Route uh, 10. Over in Delhi, the other side of that, they have a September season for okay. bear. Well, yeah, this is uh, 40 and 401. 4P yeah. 4 4 already has it, okay. which is 4P already has it. the other side of Delhi. Yeah, and this is for 40 and 4P, which would, yeah. I believe would include Franklin and Deposit or Hancock area. And they're just asking, you know, for us support from the town board in favor of it, or if we don't. They will want response by the end of August, so they can give it to the DEC. Because the DEC officer, I believe, is the one who's looking for town support, so they can pass it on. I mean, there is some merit to it. I don't disagree. There's crop damage, you know, bee damage. You know, bears can be an issue. Uh, whether they're a big issue here, I know we have crop damage in the cornfields. Uh, and some fields, you know, I mean, it's no. not sometimes <laughs> more than others. You know, I had one field I stopped planting because it can't, <laughs> they go in there and they roll, I guess. But uh, it was a small field, but this was years ago, too. But now, I mean, that, that is basically what it is, that they feel that an earlier season possibly could help control some of the damage. Well, they want to help the deer herd, too, which our deer herd doesn't need help. I I think there is enough deer out there. But, you know, <laughs> last you know, oh, no, with the news last night they were talking, people would like to see the eastern cougar released or something. Yeah, it was on the TV last night, and you know, DC hasn't made any decisions on it. No, you don't want to put them out there, you won't have any deer. <laughs> I think it's a few hunters, too. They might be right. Right. But that was, I was really surprised that they said at that time, I don't think the EC was look, really looking at it yet, but somebody had brought it up. I don't know who. Probably a car insurance company. <laughs> yeah. Somebody did a study in the state of Washington is where the study came from. Oh, okay. Oh. That's handy, isn't it? Yeah.